<laughs> oh, folks, welcome back. Welcome back, folks. Welcome back. <laughs> there is an alien in our midst. Dang, dog. Nigga wow, nigga. Episodes. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, alien after yeah. two episodes. Yeah, alien. <laughs> yeah, basically, it's kind of a thing. No, I'm not. But, nope. But before we continue, th- shout out to our um, last guest, even though I wasn't here, uh, Curvin. Word, word. Dropping you know. that money game. Yeah, Black Forex Trader. Hashtag AKA Black Mr. Forex. Forex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being on. Word. He, you know what he did? He ex- like he opened up a whole... I didn't know I had so many friends that did um, Forex. Oh. oh nigga, yeah, nigga, him, was like, oh, you know, I've been doing that shit. And mm-hmm. even like friends that like want to do it. Like, because I've been talking to people There's about it, and they're like, yeah, man, me too. Like, we going... So yeah, man. Some yeah, definitely yeah. waves remember, have been have been made. Remember what they said: have sev- several streams of income. Word, word. And more than that, you know, make a difference, man. If you black mm-hmm. and you got some information that mm-hmm. most of us haven't gotten in these lower income or middle class areas where we went to public schools, mm-hmm. and you got some information that wasn't taught there, bring it out, man. What's up? We want to hear it. Exactly. Yeah, like niggas learn how to make crack by mistake. We can't learn forex by mistake. Definitely. Hey. We were forced and, and, to learn and, and how to no, make crack. That's, that's on, that was the entrepreneurial mindset. We said, you know what? This is how. Yeah, this is where it's going. This, so this yeah. is how we're gonna build up and try to make it out. Mm, and, you know, yeah. and some of the crabs make it out the bucket. Some mm. don't. Yeah, unfortunately, I, that's a whole other topic. But Word. I feel <laughs> hashtag Black Finance. Hashtag We did not bring crack <laughs> to the community. First of all, yeah. Mm. Oh. Hashtag we don't blow in the bucket. Oh, um, not live in South America. Side note: <laughs> How we talk about drugs? <laughs> we no, 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 no. Black finance. Be- before we continue the, uh, the episode, side note about bringing crack into the communities. <laughs> the CIA of all people. There's an article that said the CIA cannot find a link to themselves to the crack epidemic. <laughs> <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course they can. Of course, oh yeah, we don't see how we. We're like, like word. Of course, man. <laughs> Well, but thank, anyway, thank you for joining us on the <coughs> back edition of TPSG's Wild Ass Tangent. Yeah, oh. yes, your mom. So this is gonna be a I, this gonna be a hilarious. This gonna be a loosey goosey. Just just based on what's going on and what well, we talked about. Just based on you saying loosey goosey. I, I think <laughs> we might need to roll it on. <laughs> right, right, right. And with that, this is Flocka Zulu, aka Nicodemus, aka Sir Black Styling the Third, aka Pablo Escobich, aka Gary Indiana Jones, aka. Hey, no more. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> it has been a while. I thought I was doing good yeah. too. Really Stop the violence. Shit. Boop, 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 That's your, automatic. Mm-hmm. It's your boy, Dramatic, a.k.a. Wave Chappelle, Wavy McGrady, Black Galifianakis, La Pat Chopra. You know me by many names, but your mom knows me by one. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh. <coughs> Ain't your mama teach you some respect, oh, nigga? Right. Hey, don't feel the wave. <laughs> speaking of which, where we got that from, if those of you who don't know where we get the AKA, da, 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 we got that from Outcast. And speaking of outcasts, there's rumors going around. Oh, so speaking of, I seen Black, aka oh, Black shit. Dynamite, aka <laughs> Holy Bucka Roaches, aka <laughs> the nigga y'all came to watch this podcast for, aka Swiss Army um, nigga, Swiss Army um, nigga, got the new braid, Swiss Army um, nigga, got them fresh braid, Swiss Army um, um, nigga. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nigga introduce himself, I'm like, fuck everything else. They see your eyebrows on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Welcome to TBSG. Yeah. I'm permanently surprised. <laughs> I am your host. No. Damn, you say you got to sprinkle sugar on your eyebrows. This is sweet talk here, linebacker. <laughs> Damn. Oh my God, you niggas <laughs> cool. My name is but Surprise as, Jones. As, as Flock of Zulu, <laughs> as Flock of Zulu tried to force it earlier. <laughs> yes, there is a huge rumor Word. that 3000 <laughs> is making an album. I couldn't even wait. I'm like, fuck y'all. For real. Fuck With y'all introduction. Hella excited. With, I to talk with Dr. Dre. Oh, I always what? had a I always had a dream of my favorite artists being on my favorite producers tracks that they haven't been, mm. and this is one of my dreams. I would love to hear Andre Three Stacks on some Dr. Dre shit. So Three Stacks Real talk. reportedly well, is working with Dr. Dre. Here's what happened. There's this rapper, East Coast, this West Coast rapper named Thurs. For those of y'all who don't know, who are out of the loop, yeah. Three Stacks is Andre Three Thousand, aka Andre Benjamin of Outkast. Yes. Right. AKA Possum Aloysius, AKA. Right. <laughs> I thought it was Dookie Possum Aloysius. Anyway, you know what you're talking about. Anyway, so Possum this, the third? Th- this rapper named Thurs was on this um, radio show, and you know, they asked him the question, said, Have you ever felt starstruck? 
in the studio with another rapper. He was like, yeah, Andre 3000. But what they deduced from it was, wait, Andre 3000 is in the studio? Right. And then he basically said, yeah, I heard him lay some shit down with Dr. Dre that sound like an album. And he said to himself, I'm jumping to conclusions and saying he's dropping out. So it's, no, it's nothing concrete. Right, it's right. nothing 100%. Enough but, for me. That's but me but you brought that us up awesome. earlier about people like that. The people that are in the studio like that. What do you mean? I think you're gonna say something like they they would know things and stuff since they're all around the studio. Oh, so, so yeah, what it's I a was, percentage what I was that he may about, be right. It's not even that. It's just what I was actually saying in that statement was when you have someone who's an artist, a, a, a pure artist like Andre Three Thousand, mm-hmm. like the you know people who make they'll record a hundred album. I mean, a hundred tracks for one album mm-hmm. per album. Like yes. these niggas got albums mm-hmm. that are B sides. You know, <laughs> like yeah. mm-hmm. albums of B sides or albums of shit that just didn't make it. So essentially, like if Andre Three Stacks is the artist, the rapper that we've always believed him to be, mm-hmm. then yeah, that's true. He's in the studio regardless. He's mm-hmm. going to be there. And it can be an album or it can be an album. Guess what? Three Stacks got the bread to spend mm-hmm. to pay Dr. Dre as part of his hobby. <laughs> Imagine. To make a beat <laughs> for him, if you think about it. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. He probably has that type of extra capital on him mm-hmm. to say, now rapping is now just something I love that I made money off of. Now I have other business ventures, but I'm never going to stop rapping because I'm a rapper to the death of me. Because every time he drop on anybody feature, mm-hmm. he murk the whole track. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. like um, Sweep the flow of that shit. I remember he dropped the EP on Mother's Day yeah. called Look Ma No Hands. Mm-hmm. It's on SoundCloud. So, you know, he's still working. Also, something cool, people have been catching him playing his flute in out ra- in, in public and random. Like, yeah. I saw one time, I was like, okay, that's he's, just a wild coincidence. There was like two or three or four more instances. I'm like, this nigga is... He's all right, so here's my theory. <laughs> this dude, first of all, the report, I think OK Player first reported it, right? I think so. And then now this rapper, Thurs, reports it. It could be part of a like an album rollout. Like, this is how we going... Get it out there this time know, because they people any, been waiting. Uh-huh. But once Andre you get does. the rumors out, because mm. everyone's been waiting for an Andre three thousand solo. Album. N- now you're getting them you know? ready. Yeah, like, so like, it's like, all right, I'm gonna them. use these different avenues of media. Mm. And three stacks is probably like, man, if if y'all for those of y'all who don't know, I've read you no know, articles in the past, but he likes to go driving and write songs. He he he'll like hold a tape recorder or now his phone and he'll hum his melodies. He'll mm. go back home and listen to him, get in the studio and oh, write shit, lyrics to him. Like, and driving is a therapy for him and a lot of other artists mm-hmm. as well, not just rappers. And so I would think that like part of him going out in public mm-hmm. and playing that flute is a purely, uh, it's an artistic thing. I'm going to go out and I'm mm-hmm. going to feel people's energies and I'm going to play the flute and mm-hmm. fuck it. If some people notice me, you know, I'm old enough to where not many people will notice me now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just the true fans of Outkast. Yeah, like, yeah. And I could see that as him doing it as part of a rollout on top of it, too, or it just being a double. I don't think he, Three Stacks, would have thought of that first because I think he's I think he so would. into the art. I think he would. Like, yeah. He, he's even smarter than we credit him for. No, I'm not like, saying that he wouldn't be smart. I'm saying, from, from my opinion, he, what he, Three he, Stacks is to me is someone who, and I could be completely wrong, mm-hmm. but what he is to me is someone who loves the music so much that it comes first before anything. Oh, okay, yeah, I can feel you. And then that. anything yeah. else comes after. And he'll be aware of it, uh-huh. but that's not his motive. I got you. And mm-hmm. your theory makes more sense also because... Um, I think it was this week or last week. Uh, yes, Jules. She was in the news again. And anyway, Wait, um, she basically compared Earth Gang to Outcast. However, oh, I heard she about that said Earth Gang is like Outcast with two Andres. And I'm like, first of all, that's just a first of all, that's just a cookie cutter statement. First of all, yeah, first of all, it's a cookie cutter. Second of all, don't disrespect Big Boy like yeah. that. People don't ever. constantly, and ever since she said that, there's this debate like, oh, is Big Boy good? How good is Outcast? Is Outcast only I three stacks? Da da da. I'm like, the only way. Some okay. somebody on Twitter is like, anybody who doesn't respect Big Boy doesn't know where those hooks come from. Mm-hmm. Big exactly. Boy makes the majority so, of the hooks, and then yeah. in um <clears throat> in the early like in the early stages um oh, what, what was I gonna say? In um like Southern Playlistic, Big Boy was the better one. No, he wrote all the hooks. No, no, no. I'm I'm just talking about rapping. When they first came out, he was oh. he was at the forefront. Yeah. You, you know how every group you have Wu Tang and they're at the forefront. You mm-hmm. have this group and they're at mm-hmm. the forefront. Big boy was the face of yeah. Outcast. He well, was the better artist. It yeah. wasn't until later people started realizing that Andre but it, well, nothing. Andre never 
never was a bad rapper. He was always rapping well. But when they first came out, Big Boy was the face. It was just later. Was, I don't no, think absolutely. They, they made him the face. No, he just was. Yeah, I think he like just, I don't know if his they made attitude him, overpowers because he's that hustler. He's, exactly. But Andre was still on that stuff too. No, no, he was. But, but he, you know, he still, fell off. He, he was still like kind of thinking a little bit deeper, and mm-hmm. you know, was on some other things. But yo, Andre was yo, and that's the other thing, right? Andre was less. Fl- he really going back to being a pure artist. This nigga mm-hmm. would wear what was he in one of the videos? He had like no shirt and flip flops and shit. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, yeah, he, on. it was, was real, place? real, it was, real light. And, and that's three stacks. Like that's he's like nigga, I'm just here to rap, nigga. Mm-hmm. Make players some ball, not players club. Players, players ball, ball, yeah, man. my bad. So um, right? No, that was pre Erica Badu. Yeah, yeah. Pretty. No, no. Post Erica yeah. Badu was AT Aliens. Yeah, and AT after. Aliens and that was pre. Oh, yeah, that was no, actually like, diapers yeah. and beanies and like them. <laughs> yeah, in the in the big furry word, boots word. and shit. It was actually Diddy that told um, Three Sacks to take his shirt off. Yeah, Diddy directed yeah, that video. That video you know that? Yeah. Exactly for Players Ball. Like on the documentary, it was like that was me who directed. Like, calm down, Diddy. Yeah, you get all the props you have. Relax. <laughs> I said, you a sex symbol, boy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 was gonna love Andre was you. probably like. <laughs> <laughs> but Sleepy Brown made a good point because on the Breakfast Club, they brought it up how Yes Jewel said that. And what's funny, um, Big Boy found out through his son. His son was like, yo, dad, this, this bitch on Twitter <laughs> just tweeted some wild shit and they dragging her ass. <laughs> like, you know, she, and she was That's like, Big Boy's son. <laughs> and Sleepy Brown made a good point. She said that, I think. And I still don't, I'm not justifying it. She said it because both the um, members in Earth Gang dress like Andre. Mm-hmm. That's probably where the comparison was. If that's well, what she was comparing, then I understand. But because Big Boy never dressed that crazy. Actually, he, no, no, in, compar- no. In, comparison, in comparison. No, no, no. I think we're comparing it because <laughs> Big Boy was still very bold and daring, but he was fashionable. Still, He still kept up. Urban look. A street look. So yeah. he know he big boy is clearly a person that said, This is what I like, and I'm not straying away from it. And yeah. he just made alterations to that look. Mm. But yeah, Big Boy had the, it, yeah. some of the wildest outfits. What you mean, man? And some of the best jewelry the rap game seen too. You're right. I'm like, talking about in comparison the hairstyle. To Andre, I know. Yeah. Well, in comparison to Andre, people are one tweet pissed me off. I'm sorry, I gotta mention this. The person <laughs> said that like Andre represents uh, black excellence while Big Boy represents the black oh. person that you're trying to get away from. Oh. And it was a nigga oh, with a yeah. blue check. I'm like, bro, first of all, you clearly don't listen to Outkast. Mm. You listen to Hey Y'all and the way you I will move. Touch That's on, what you I will touch to. on that again, that Big Boy was the one who wrote, I think, absolutely every hook. I wouldn't be surprised. For Southern Playlist of Cadillac Music, the Outkast's first album, mm. for AT Aliens, mm. and... A lot of, and then Aquemini. I think Aquemini was when Andre started working a little bit more, and mm, he. Up. But they were they were more bouncing back and forth mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. some yin and yang shit. Yeah. And then by the time Stankonia came around, that's when Andre Three Stacks mm-hmm. took the front seat, and that's why we have Bob. Mm-hmm. Thank you, God. But yeah, that's um, incredible. You know, so. and <laughs> I, but the problem with that is that Big Boy. That energy, first of all, his rapping is impeccable, and people don't give him enough props. Like Big Boy will drop so many references yes, in a verse yes. mm-hmm. that went over your head mm-hmm. that you have, and you have no idea. And he's still teaching you how to hustle, mm-hmm. how to be a man, like right. a lot how of different things. A lot of songs, and a lot of songs, and just style, eats. just like like just your energy, your swag, yep. or mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. A lot he of songs that. he eats every rapper on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Think of the whole world, Andre. Mm-hmm. Killer Mike, him, and you know, you oh, notice he oh, anchors a lot. Words, yes, yeah. Like all those. First yes. of all, Andre's verse and Killer Mike's verse, they both slid. Yeah, yeah. and he and he murked both of them. Still. <laughs> See, so, I, I don't, I don't, I agree, but not with the whole world. I think he um murked three stacks and Raekwon on skew on, on the Barbie. On Barbie. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. you have to understand the magnitude of that. Andre 2000, he is who he is. They've been in the game. He established himself. Then Raekwon from Wu Tang fucking Clan. Mm. You know they don't go on nobody the, tracks. The God of Street but Slang. The God of Street Slang. <laughs> um, wh- um, witty, unpredictable live shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only nigga they collabed with mm. is Nas, Mob Deep, and Wu Tang mm. and affiliates. For them. To go and fuck with with Outkast, mm-hmm. and then the rumor started the whole Dungeon Family Wu Tang collab. Mm-hmm. People don't understand the magnitude of that. Right. For to get Raekwon on a fucking track with Outkast, mm-hmm. you do not understand. Outkast mm-hmm. went from 
at the Source Awards, y'all gonna know about the South mm-hmm. to having Raekwon on the f- two fucking tracks actually. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about the knowledge Raekwon dropped about? On Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting inspired. <laughs> but no, no, that's just another example just how, of how good mm-hmm. Big Boy can rap. He's just I don't I like I, I can't understand it. No offense to you, God, but it's not like he's you, God of Wu Tang. Mm. Or pros of the Fugees. Mm. Those niggas are significantly worse than their peers. <laughs> Wait, but who's they're the not bad. Said before pros? I'm having you got. Oh, you guys not. He's no, no. Listen to what I say. Dog. You guys not whack. None of the Wu Tang members are whack. In comparison, when you compare Wu God and Master Killer to Method Man and Ghostface. But then when they're on their own, you get what I'm saying? But they're a different type of Among, rappers. Amongst their constituents. But they're different type of rappers because I think You God is mad clever. And I think no, that he Master is. Killer is very clever. Absolutely. Is. I think they're just a different type of rap and that might not match the energy you're looking for. All right. If that's the case, I can because understand it. But I, I, I feel like you, straight up rapping bar for bar, Oh well, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but, because, but it's not like that with Andre and But Big Master Boy. Killer is clearly a poetic dude. And or more like a you know mm-hmm. he, he glides a little bit. You got you could tell you got like the party. No no like, yeah, you yeah. If, tell, you dog, if you watch a documentary, if you listen though, yeah. to it, no, but just like if you listen to his shit, he's always bu- he's bouncing dog. Yeah. He's not trying to wrap his ass off. He's bouncing to the beat and he's still dropping some shit sometimes. Yeah, but, the, the point. The point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nigga. <laughs> this is not Lee. become the My defense. Of we we all. I'm guys. sorry, yo. Sometimes you gotta pull us back because we will always go back and forth Wait, on this hip hop so discussion. Yeah, so. the, no, the, 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 the point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, is, is that, big boys that nigga too? That's well, big boy, is, no, exactly. <laughs> People think well, it's yo, like this; it's well, like that. But well, even like the concept, even well, even um, I'm, my bad to no, cut no, you off. Ahead. Songs like the Mighty O, yeah. When they when oh they man, both come well, in twenty-two like, bars each at that. That's word. insane. Like and, and they all like it felt like more <laughs> for real. Yeah, they were really long. <laughs> and and like you you just see where it, like they both they both came at their verses so different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then they slayed it, dog. It's yeah. Like on some what? And that that's when that's when Andre drops his the most disrespectful verse. You yeah. Hate hater I, can't I, tell. Either wish me well. Go, go to hell, hell or go, go to yell. Yeah. <laughs> behave. He basically <laughs> said he's bored with rap. Right. He said it. He Eat up it. whatever rapper, but I'm tangled in my cord, huh? Oh, Boy, kind of like a knight with a sword without dragging the battle. Word. <laughs> Come on, man. He's fucking Not bored it. with you, niggas, man. Word. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> now, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know that hip hop shit get me live, but yeah, man. Mm-hmm. The whole disrespect for Big Boy, like he's there is no outcast without Big Boy, and there's no outcast without on. Like first of all, you, it, they cannot exist they without really each contribute. other. Exactly. First all, and first of all, he's he's dropped some fantastic album. He just dropped a single you know called saying? Intentions. With he, he's released an album with Sleepy Brown. Word, word, oh, word. yeah. That's oh. gonna be fire. And like people need to go back and like check out um, Big Boy's solo album. His solo album Boomerverse was dope. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Sir Lucius Left I Foot. I think yeah. that I liked Sir Lucius Left Foot so much because I was still looking for that outcast feeling. Mm. And Sir Lucius Left Foot was the closest to that. Mm. It was also his first solo album after um, you know, the last Outcast mm. album. Dangerous. But yeah, Boomer, it kind of had that feel. Boomerverse was cool. Like it had some joints on it. Yeah, that joint with ASAP, right? Mm. Joint with Snoop Dogg was dope. Mm. And um, yeah, and but I don't know, maybe I was just on a different thing at that point too. Because you wanted the outcast album. I wanted outcast album. I'm not gonna lie and, to you. But then when you, I ain't gonna lie, I don't listen to Andre Three Stacks like feature work as much either. Mm. Oh that, it's I I I love the, when they're together. <laughs> mm. Like I'll I was actually the nigga that listened to Speaker Box more than The Love Below, mm-hmm. believe it or not. Like, that was, Speaker Box was my shit. The oh, Love no, Below, no, initially, absolutely. I didn't listen to The Love Below, and I was a lover boy. <laughs> and yeah. I didn't listen to The Love Below, like, for real, give it a chance to, you know, later on. I'm not going to it's And it's, a, and, and it's but, an incredible album. So, Word. but, I mean. Dracula's it's the reason 808 and Heartbreaks exist. Mm. But clearly, Outkast is obviously a huge influence on not just our lives, but on a lot of other people's lives that they spark up such a hell of a debate mm-hmm. on social media and in the world. And um, But I think, oh shit. <laughs> you know what I remember the most about Speaker Box? Um, the intro. Speaker and box. Do, 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 Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. I used to, yeah, we yeah. used to use that to test speakers every time. Oh, that's a great test. Every time. You know, that, what that, I'm that's it. That's because it. it goes. That song they go through every level, all frequencies, <laughs> kid. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. every time yeah. I get a new set of. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I got some mm. studio monitors, and when I, that was the last set of speakers I got, and I'm like, I gotta see how low 
these shit. <laughs> and I test that shit. I'm like, okay. Word. Speaker box test complete. Word, word. Outcast has done so much for us. Man. Yeah, <laughs> man, we appreciate them. And bro. I feel like that album, and that's why I, I appreciate people like them, people like Crit, people who mm-hmm. they make music for niggas who have who bump their shit in the trunk. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> like they they literally was like, look. Um, we we know our our constituencies down south, yeah. Mm-hmm. And them niggas like to ride with twelves and fifteens in their truck. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's cater our music to that. Bro. Absolutely, yeah. a lot of artists don't do that. Yeah, yeah dog, and fun facts. Mm-hmm. Kwame Na is like probably top two hip hop album for me, like regardless of group single or whatever. Nah, I, would... I remember listening to it when it came out. I was ten years old. Mm-hmm. Remember, my brother bought it, and when it finished, I actually <laughs> felt empty. Mm-mm. I felt like, damn, this damn, shit is over. over. Where's right? the next album? <laughs> mm. No album in history has ever made me feel really? like that. Ne- none. Mm. I finished the equipment. I was like, uh, I was, <laughs> like you know I, what I'm saying? I, just, I will say I felt incomplete after listening to some other albums, mm-hmm. but not as much as equipment. I because I think Chunky Fire is just that. It's one of the top outros it's, ever. It's, to me, it's the best outro I've heard that I could remember, like on an album. Besides, like next to Kanye's college dropout outro, that was a good outro. Like, yeah. but this, yo, Chances Chunky Fire outro on Acid Rap was wicked. That was pretty good. Okay, yeah, damn. <laughs> damn. I, there's a, I'll have a top five, no particular order, but mm. definitely Chances outro yeah. on Acid Rap, Acid Rain, <laughs> amazing. Mm. Um, Dang, that's a that's a that's an interesting top five to have. Oh, I Yo, have a top next week. five album outros. So. I have it next week. <laughs> All right. Next year, next week. That's I would homework. definitely put most deaths made December in that for black on both sides. Mm, Man. Forgot about Who, that. What rapper drops an instrumental, mm. complete instrumental, not even a hip hop style instrumental at the end of some hard hitting boom bap shit? Mm. Most deaf. And <laughs> what, what the fuck am I listening to? And now I'm going to sleep. Word, word. <laughs> it shit sounds amazing. Word. So, um, oh, but you know I, I what? I was a wicked intro, outro. What? Word. Um, the killer, Samstown. That's some. That's oh some, God! Oh, <laughs> yeah. I thought you I talking like, about hip hop. I haven't heard the killers in a long time. Is that that? Somebody told me that you had a boyfriend who looks like a girlfriend. That yeah. I in February of last year. Yeah, I missed yeah. that one. Yeah. I missed I that one. Remember. You don't remember think, that shit? That shit was rocking. I think that, that was like in the space, space mask, space age. Some, S- some. It some was space, very ominous. Yeah, some sounding. space album, but it was very ominous. I used to listen to them a lot, like. High school, freshman year, FIU. That's what it is. Having an ominous sound at the end of your album creates a good outro because it's a finality. True. There's no way to look at it. Finality on this topic. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm glad there's no finality on our next topic. Well, I definitely (laughs) feel empty after I watch a Dave Chappelle special. I feel very empty after that shit. Where's my? Well, I wouldn't say empty. I wouldn't say empty because all my laughter, he took all my laughter. Yeah, yeah. You, you have <laughs> I laughed, laugh. maxed out my laughing capacity. No, I, I <laughs> laugh annoyingly loud whenever I watch Dave Chappelle. For real. It's and you know, it was after, it was, sorry, it was before the black, the backlash. Because a lot, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people laughed in spite. Mm. Like, oh, I'm going to laugh just because people hate it. Mm. Not because I like it. That's, yeah. th- that's whack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I watched it before the backlash and it was generally funny. I just want to make sure my mind wasn't skewed. Mm. Like I'm laughing out of spite. Right, right. But um, you do. yeah, <laughs> and and well, so <laughs> obviously Dave Chappelle talks about a lot of sensitive modern topics, current mm-hmm. events. I remember the names, sticks and stones. stones. It's called <laughs> stick. The the stand up is called sticks and stones. Uh-huh. So he's clearly letting y'all know, be ready. Right, I'm yeah. about to talk about some sensitive shit from my perspective because I'm a comedian who has my own platform, right? Exactly. But of course, what happened? Shout out Netflix everyone, for drawing a line in the sand. Appreciate that. <laughs> Um, because I think, I mean, I think the rest of y'all could agree that comedy is really a safe space. Mm-hmm. It's it's probably the only real safe space in America that, if I think about it, like where someone can say something a little outlandish, but as long as he he or she explains it in a in a good pers- in a perspective that is comedic, mm-hmm. then yeah, it comes off. Because mm-hmm. as long as you can get somebody to laugh at it, you can get someone to think about un- uncomfortable subjects Agreed. and be more reflective at that too. Because you'll see yourself in a joke. Mm-hmm. Some people just yeah. can't take a joke and that's why we have people you know, mm-hmm. backlashing right now. 
And that's what and that's what kills me about it. Like for years and years and years, comedians have been throwing all these offensive. And on top you know of that, I, f- I feel I'm, like I feel like they're offensive, um, depending on the person too. I mm. think there's something important I should say before, and I think I'd be speaking for all of us to say that. I'm um, sorry to cut you off, but for like, don't. This is not a. Uh, a, a we're not going at anyone mm. in this. We're definitely just expressing that, like, this is how we feel, mm. and I'm not what. Nothing. Why I, didn't, you? I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. <laughs> no, and and it's not. It's more of a disclaimer in the sense of like, yeah. The, you, we're we're defending free speech, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I don't think that Dave Chappelle is being. I think that he's still being tactful mm-hmm. with the way that he presents it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bad, and so. that's and that's what that's what kills me about it. That's a part of it. In comedy and in ent- well, in comedy specifically, nobody's of is above reproach. Mm-hmm. Right. Literally, I've seen comedians talk about handicapped people, blind, deaf, mm-hmm. babies. Dementia, all that. Mm. Especially, it's the um. I've seen um them talk about people um that can't defend themselves either. Mm. So when he came and he was talking about the alphabet people, as he mm. puts them, the yeah. L's, the G's, and the B's, and the T's, and all that, mm. I didn't understand their backlash. It's not like he went on there and bashed them for hours straight mm. and said bad things about them. All he did was make a joke, just like he. Made about ever, just, mm-hmm. just how he's made jokes about ever, he's made jokes about his own people, about mm-hmm. his own family. Mm-hmm. He makes jokes about his wife. His wife's what uh, Korean, right? Mm-hmm. He makes jokes about his oh, kids being Korean. half Korean and half black all yeah. the time. Mm-hmm. So everybody can get it. Mm-hmm. I understand if he was being straight disrespect. If he mm-hmm. went out there and said "f y'all" this and that, and then he threw a joke in there, I'd be like, All right, "You tripping, Chappelle?" Right. But he threw a joke in there, and he threw perspective in there, and he threw insight mm-hmm. in there, mm-hmm. and, and just was, the way he does. And I just feel like they're upset because they have this, in my opinion, you don't have to share my opinion, they have this way about them where they feel like they cannot be touched, they cannot be talked about by anybody in any way, shape, or fashion, or form. And I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. It's an imbalance in power. Absolutely, it's an imbalance in power. And well, what what my point of view on that is that it's the, that's the, that's the result, right? No one can tell me anything because maybe... They're already really upset, mm-hmm. right? And the, but that's still for me, from my point of view. Like we always say, um, <laughs> <laughs> gotta be careful because um, I mean, if you think about it, I, I believe like David Duke and wow, I remember the whiteness. I mean, his <laughs> name, his name, kind of like it's it's the alliteration, David. Yeah. Duke. <laughs> Sound like a damn cartoon character. And, um, <laughs> and Black Klansman. <laughs> they, they actually like I believe still meet for dinner sometimes. Mm. And talk and shit. And it's, I think that's just a testament to say you should be able to have a. Let me not say you should. That's the wrong way to say it. Um, Ron Stallworth. Ron Stallworth. That's so. I, can't, I got the Ron right. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, in order to, from my, from my opinion, in order to find real growth or to find real solutions, you can't com- constantly be in war with. The people that you're trying to convince. Mm. Mm, yes. You Absolutely. there has to you you have to humble yourself to make the playing field level. Now it's hard to find that on both sides. Mm-hmm. But as far as like if you want to get through the conversation, it's really hard to remove your emotions mm-hmm. because you're dealing with a lot of personal things mm-hmm. that have um been thrown at you when it comes to this subject. I- and to find two people on opposing sides mm-hmm. to uh, to have that maturity to set their emotions aside and try to attack the subject at hand mm-hmm. and try to understand why. Why do you feel this way? Why did I feel that way? And how can we still coexist peacefully mm-hmm. if we still don't agree at the end of this conversation? Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I, I think that's a bigger part of the subject. I think Dave Chappelle's uh, stand up has brought out more of the outrage, more of the anger. And it's it it I think if anything it shows more people who aren't willing mm. to coexist. Or it shows a lot of entitlement too. A lot of yeah. It or shows what what it is. I feel like there's a lot of um, resentment on one side, but then who you, side? <laughs> on um on the on the both both sides on okay. like LGBTQ community and like those who feel that um. You know, there well, there are those who are inherently homophobic, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, of course, of course. Yeah. There are those who feel like um, you know, they're not 
they wouldn't call themselves homophobic, but they feel like that community is making the world more, you know, whatever, having to mm -hmm. walk on eggshells or what have you. But I feel like there's just like a lot of resentment, a lot of like um, just anger. Mm -hmm. Because when you when you look at individuals from that community, there's a lot of times a lot of abuse, a mm -hmm. lot of um, a lot of bullying, um, a lot of a lot struggle with acceptance with their family. Mm -hmm. So it's just anger, it's a mm -hmm. lot of pain to deal with, and yeah. a lot of pain. But then when that anger is just lashed out, you know, and of course when we talk about that in, imbalance of power, to mm -hmm. where like now this commun this this comedian has to you know. In in essence, do battle with a community of people because he talked about them, while he when he talked about other people, it's mm -hmm. like it's like um, you know, is that is 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 just that is is just that um, it's not a healthy way of 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 of, of doing things. It's just a combativeness. Yeah, it's like you, it's kind of you're going to back and forth because yeah. you're there to criticize. You're Word. not there to actually understand. Understand because yeah. when you mm -hmm. when you are on social media, a lot of times when you're on. Like, cause I see, like, I'll see like a lot of retweets and stuff like that. And a lot of times, like, it's just a attacking, attacking, attacking. They'll <laughs> yeah. be like, mm -hmm. they'll be like, cis men are this, or this person Don't did call this, me or this cis person man. did this. Right? You know what I mean? It's always <laughs> like a an a, a, an opponent, and it's just that defensiveness, right? So it turns from now all of a sudden, because you're oppressed, you're using your power to kind of essentially do the same thing mm -hmm. to people who don't view the same the world the same yeah as absolutely you, you know I, and and that's what entitlement comes like Chappelle George Carlin um, um, Richard Pryor yeah. Corey Holcomb is another one he uh -huh. he 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 does not that he doesn't give a fuck he gives less of a fuck <laughs> R.I.P. Patrice O'Neill it's yeah. been a lot of comedians that have approached comedy this way but mm -hmm. for, for some reason this generation Mm -hmm. This entitled ass generation feel would, like would, they're the only ones. And what it feels like is that they attack black like stars. Black oh yeah, absolutely oh, for sure. Because for sure. There's a, there's a because we have Daniel Tosh. Yeah, we have Bill Burr. He just came out with and a I special. Think he's just as funny. And the I, first I, I, well, not just as funny, but I think. And the first Tosh twenty minutes was the same as Chappelle's first twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. Talk about cancel culture and all that. Mm -hmm. But this generation feels like. Oh, we're the generation going to step up. We're going to stop this and blah, blah, blah. No. Word. If you well, want to talk about oppressed, black people have been oppressed our entire fucking lives. And these comedians still make these yeah. jokes about us. Well, Do we riot them? Do we? No, we don't. That's, that's bully behavior because the bully always <coughs> goes after the weak individual and like, or the person, the type of person they don't like, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if you don't like black people, well, fuck it. I'm going to go after this black comedian. Mm -hmm. He's probably the easiest person to go after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Excuse at, if anything. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't hear much outrage about Bill Burr, yeah, or personally. That. But you know what they'll say? Mm -hmm. They'll say, "Oh, nobody oh, knows about Bill Burr. Who fucking cares?" What do you mean? See, that's what you're selective. Mean? Which no, no, no. What I've seen it. I've yeah. seen it. P um, I was I was purposely tweeting like, "Oh, I can't wait till Bill Burr gets his backlash that Chappelle got," mm -hmm. and people were like. Everybody want Bill Burr to get backlash, but everybody's like, who is Bill Burr? Basically saying he's not going to get backlash because he's not as big as Rappel. He's and that means y'all are selective with your race. He's big enough. Y'all not angry enough. at what people say. You're angry at who says it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's bullshit. You don't want to see a black man being that nope. bold mm. talking about your cause because... Honestly, he was talking a lot of truth, in a, and to me, all he does is talk in truth in a non-disrespectful way. And I'm a, he makes it I, get, I consider myself a defensive person. And I've watched comedy shows and heard jokes that I related to and been like, well, damn. But I'm still laughing. <laughs> exactly. Word, word, <laughs> like, word. that cut deep. Talking it about my funny. soul. Like, word, some word. shit I did last week. I'm like, <laughs> funny, nigga. Damn, I can't believe I did that. You know? here's, so, here's why. Here's what I don't understand about people who can't take a joke. Uh -huh. and, and this is why I think it's more of a reflection of yourself more than anything. Because if you can laugh, if you go to the com comedy show, right, mm -hmm. and you can laugh at everything else, except for when it's about you, mm -hmm. that means in your mind... You're if, perfect. If, you know what I'm saying? No, you have if, a superiority complex. You know yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If someone's talking about you and you take it maliciously, that means anything they said before that was just as malicious, right? Yeah. So why didn't you take offense to that? It's only when, oh, it's malicious towards me, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. da 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, they don't care. To they can right laugh at they jokes about court. black people. They can laugh jokes about, about, about his Korean children. Sh 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 right? His half made a Korean joke children. About... Half Asian, I'm not sure. About the police. I think it's... No, she's Filipino. 
Chappelle jokes. He, he's Filipino. made plenty jokes about police brutality and them right. shooting black people, right? Mm-hmm. Which happened. You've never seen, seen Blue Lives Matter come out, right? And, ne- and, and run him into the ground. No, not, uh. e- not even that. You've <laughs> never seen. You've never seen a, a mother of a child who who got killed by the police. Yeah. That's so. That's so offensive. Oh, true. You know what I'm saying? My how baby you, was shot how, down. How can you say that my baby was shot down? No. But then someone that, can that, say, "Well, that's that because is, those mothers are used to this." See, but then the, no, because I'm just time, being. You know, the, I'm being done right now. Yeah. Right, yeah. but then <laughs> that, that, in, that entitlement is, isn't there. So exactly. That that happened to people. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why aren't you mad at that? All mm-hmm. of a sudden, he's he's talking about. Like his, he's hey, disrespectful. First of, like, all, first of all, he's talking about his inner, his interaction with yes, his, with, with, with with certain people. Exactly. Right? So it's not even like he he searched out, you know. What I mean? And he softballed it in too. You can tell that most people probably just read an article. Mm. They didn't actually watch it because mm-hmm. if you watch the special, mm-hmm. he comes out with his impersonations first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he attacks the overall culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're stupid. No matter what you say, no matter how long ago you said it, mm-hmm. you're done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he moves on That's to the you. next subject. Mm-hmm. He's like, then he moves on to the alphabet people, and mm-hmm. like he's really encompassing an entire thought or, or i should say he's giving a larger thought that encompasses like several different points mm-hmm. and and he to me still not being disrespectful he made a great metaphor about the car mm-hmm. and, fantastic metaphor um because he was he was right or, yeah he was he i don't care like from yeah. my perspective mm-hmm. he was right mm-hmm. and i think the point he was trying to make then why he did and sticks and stones because uh-huh. he was trying he he went after everything he came out talking about suicide right yeah. So people are like, oh, I don't and they're not talking about suicide, like no, that, right? no, no right. suicide advocate. Ju- and, see, and I would <laughs> say like, hey, R.I.P. to my peoples I've lost. I'm mm-hmm. that personal, but mm. um, I that's a very personal thing for me. Suicide. Mm. I, I've lost some people this year, and um, so and I was still the the show came out. That special came out like a week after, mm. not even like a few days after I experienced something personal in my life, and. I was still able to laugh at his joke and not because I wasn't laughing at the person or the event, like what that is. Mm -hmm. I was, he was making a very valid point Mm -hmm. as far as struggles and Mm -hmm. what his perspective of what we go through versus Mm -hmm. the threshold of pain that someone's able to take who grew up a more privileged lifestyle. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what he was trying to say was, well, you know what? Tyrone, he's on, he got child support, he this, he that, and he, the la- the next thing he wanted to do was probably go see some titties or something like mm. yeah he's like never so crosses it never crosses, crosses his mind himself, and yeah. kill himself so mm. I guess like it's the way that he the examples that he used are uncomfortable because these examples are actual direct effects mm. of poverty of or more so um, direct effects of the way the system is set up mm-hmm. right. Like these these jokes are making people uncomfortable because it's talking about their privilege and how it affects other people. Absolutely, mm-hmm. you know and they I mean? cannot stand to and hear something like that. That's hard. That's really hard for someone to take. Nobody, nobody some, wants some, to. Someone who has been told they're right their entire life, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, and not literally told you're right, but you're enabled mm. in your behaviors to continue to behave the way that you were nurtured. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, so now that you're an adult. You haven't tried to you you haven't you don't have a proper understanding of what uh what your energy and what you give what you put out into the world and how it affects <laughs> how it affects everyone else around us. So mm-hmm. um I think that Dave Chappelle hit it on the head. I think this is what's supposed to happen when mm-hmm. you have a great stand up like from a dude like Dave Chappelle. Mm-hmm. It creates a larger conversation. Right. And I think we should continue having that conversation. Yeah, you, you have something to say? Yeah. Um, to wrap up on that, yeah, yeah, it, it's it's gonna wrap up and it's gonna bring it, it's it's gonna bring us into our next subject too. Oh, his joke about because I was about to do it. <laughs> <laughs> his joke about the um the word faggot and the word nigga. Okay. Remember he had the meeting with the with the execs uh-huh. and everything. Like, oh, you can't say the you can't say the word faggot because you're not gay. Well, he yeah, he was like, you can't say the word faggot mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> because you're not gay. He was, I understand. But he said, you know, I'm not a nigga either. <laughs> and then that <laughs> reminded me of an episode from the Boondocks from one of their later, um, f- I think from season four, the, oh, the season that people say never existed. I didn't even really There's a clip yeah. where they're talking to somebody and he's talking about the same thing about the word, about censorship, about the word nigga, about the mm. word fact. He was literally saying, 
He said, I can say nigga all day, but I say faggot. But they would beep him anytime they said faggot. They yeah. beep him. So he oh, said, look, he was like, nigga, nigga, nigga. Beep, beep, beep. You know what I'm saying? That was character, wasn't it? I yeah, think so. Yeah, I think Rallo, it was a... Yeah, Rallo, yeah. Rallo, Rallo Goodlove. Rallo yeah. Goodlove. Yeah, and yeah. and it's, just, it's just a great point that, you know, they cater to them because they don't want to offend them. They it's an imbalance of power, That's an imbalance of power. And why don't we want to offend them? First of all, you shouldn't want to inf- offend anyone. Let's start there. No, we mm. don't. You don't, don't want to offend anyone. I'm ta- oh, so for the sake of the subject, right? You're, we're just breaking down that idea, right? Well, like you shouldn't want to offend. And, no, if, wait. Say Dave Chappelle's <coughs> analogy is correct. Mm-hmm. Then the people driving the car are the ones who have the power, the mm-hmm. ones who are have the influence mm-hmm. because yeah. they have the money. Mm-hmm. So they're the ones you don't want to offend, but they're the ones that are getting offended by all these jokes. Mm-hmm. So there it is, right there. I mean, only the That's the, the best way to do it is to censor everything. Or to me, it's censor like, everything. No it, censor. To, don't nitpick. No, what they should do everything. is censor anybody backlashing someone's creative content. Oh, I, I yeah, I'm down for and that then, censorship. But, <laughs> and that who says that would work? We probably see some other wild shit happening what, out but there. But then, yeah, but then it will all come out in the watch. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you allow, say someone come out with some some racist shit, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna fight you and just be like, hold down your racist shit. I'm yeah. gonna let the, I'm gonna let the world do what it do. Yeah, you we're just not gonna watch your shit. We're not we're, gonna click it. We're, we're not gonna like, share it. That shit's None not, of that. That shit's not gonna go far. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let it come out in the wash, and people not gonna fuck with it because mm-hmm. it's it's not fuck withable. Yeah. Know what I mean? So honestly, you <laughs> so you don't have to go after people. Or go after people's career for that to happen. Yeah. If, if it's innately um, um, offensive or if it's innately, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Malicious. Okay. It'll get rid of itself. Yeah. It will get I rid mean, of itself. Mm-hmm. I'll take it even deeper because people always want somebody to pay. Mm-hmm. You know, that's definitely that pain within yourself. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like there's entitlement. This needs retribution. Mm-hmm. How dare yeah. he offend me? Word. Yeah. I don't know him. That's entitlement too. <laughs> that's that's, that's absolutely. Max. Yeah, absolutely. So. Mm. Um, I think thank God Boondocks is back. God word, me. word. Thank you, HBO, back. for word. bringing back Boondocks. Word, and this whole like <laughs> we're gonna retroactively shut down people for what they did. Cause if you're gonna do that, do it across the board. You know right? what I'm saying? Thank you. Don't word. have don't lock up Bill Cosby. Mm-hmm. Five but minutes let Harvey before. Weinstein. Right, he's five still hours. that fat piece of shit still running free. Yeah, he's probably sliding. still out there molesting and raping women. He's I hope sliding. not, but if it is, I wouldn't be surprised because he is who he is. And he's still out in these fucking streets. The most thing that happened to him, somebody saw him in the restaurant, threw water on him. Word. Bill Cosby's yeah. behind bars in Word. a fucking prison Word. eating Brett, pudding. Brett, Brett, Ka- <laughs> Brett Kavanaugh got he did. Oh he, yeah, what the fuck? Brett, all right, all right, all right. He the was, Brett Kavanaugh thing. Nah. I was on one side, but I heard some oh, shit. Hold on, hold on. Not before you, before <laughs> you even say that, dog, because it don't even matter what you heard. The fact that I think it does, but no, the fact <laughs> my that, name that happened, is my name. The fact that that happened and it wasn't even it wasn't even his career he was fighting for. It was a promotion. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't real. No real retribution. He wasn't facing no jail. It was just like whether. And now he's gonna be appointed, and he got appointed Regardless, anyway. Yeah. And it was like, fuck what you gotta say. And, then, <laughs> and all these people were just like, yeah, you know, p- people say all these things. Why all this time later? And then it happened. Then same thing with Bill Cosby so comes whole, up. Oof. Whole oh, different story. Oh, yeah. you hear, you he's hear, a monster. Oh, he's, he's a monster. Uh, da, da, da. And we're not defending Bill Cosby. No, they're not. Yeah, no, no, right. no, white women was all on Twitter Man. who never, Going. never watched a, a, a day of Cosby show yeah. in their life. But they <laughs> I had no idea they, they, what but it they meant quick for the black to be on there. Yeah, they yeah quick absolutely. To, he's a monster. Da, 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 blah, blah. And then they always have the guise of, well, I'm a so and so fan. But they're like, no, you're not. Yeah. And, then no, you have niggas like and that's another imbalance of power. That's a whole nother discussion. Trust me. What? No, 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 that whole Me Too stuff, but that's oh, a whole nother no, discussion. No, I, I, I'll say white women, dog. Whenever, no, no, especially then. Whenever, whenever, the Me Too <laughs> thing whenever also. white women just suddenly give a fuck about something, all of a sudden, like, look at Fred. White people, you know shit. What? No, that's, that might be another subject for you? another day. Yeah. Because yeah. I think we all have had that experience with, and I know this is so awkward, but being in, like, elementary school, middle school, high school, in grade school, mm-hmm. and 
the little white girl snitching class, boy. I don't. I, am oh, I the only person over. that had no, that experience? Over. Mm-hmm. Where like I'm gonna tell on you, and you were minding your own business, doing something that wasn't even that bad. No, absolutely, it happened all the time. And, you, and, and their <laughs> words, their was... words hold so much weight. They can yeah. tell on you to anyone about. And then anything. anytime I told on somebody, oh. Niggas ain't believe shit. No, oh, such and such hit me. You see it all the ah, time. Ah, shut up, Asim. You, yeah. you, talk, you just talking again. It's like, no, you see yeah. it all the time, dog. I, I some... just got slapped in my face by this little beautiful green-eyed girl. Yeah, <laughs> as someone in that world, dog, and, and those, they come in entitled because yeah. they'll snitch on another kid, but then they'll do some some shit that like, yeah, they'll, the try, like they'll try to talk and when you give them their, their rep, um, repercussions, they're like, oh, but then I'm like, the rule's the same for everybody. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what, you know what I mean? Yeah. But they do come in well, with that entitlement uh, of like, yeah. I don't get in trouble. I yeah. get straight A's. Well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And send that, send send them, I, I was just doing this last week, send them home with a B. Entitlement Look, comes with it from England. They're going to call cussing. My That's child is English. a straight A student. Not this I, time. But I'm like, <laughs> what does that mean? You know what I mean? Because they didn't earn straight A's now, so what does it mean your child is a straight A student? Right. That means you you putting you putting that child on a Above, pedestal yeah. that yeah. they didn't earn, mm. that they they expect to have when they mm. come into class now. Yep. You know and it's not the end all. Like mm. that's just an overreaction. All right, mm. come back next semester. Word. You but got it, four semester. You got four word, quarters, bro. Word, but <laughs> like make it happen. It's the mindset. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Before you even enter the classroom, you're a straight A student. What for what? Accountability is everything. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think Word. we can end on that angry black note. Good word. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers. Ah. <laughs> This is <laughs> Flock of Zulu, Sorry. a.k.a. You Motherfuckers, <laughs> a.k.a. Nigga Divas, a.k.a. Sir Black Style the Third, a.k.a. <laughs> God dang it, a.k.a. Pablo Escovich, <laughs> a.k.a. Gary Indiana Jones, a.k.a. a.k.a. Man of the Night's Watch, a.k.a. <laughs> <laughs> AKA <laughs> distributors of the AKAs, AKA no more AKA. Stop, Stop the, the violence. violence. Introduce yourself, young Joymatic. Joymatic. <laughs> Wave Chappelle, Wavy McGrady, Dwayne Wave. Oh. Paul at me. E- evolved. Word. Evolved Word. AKA. Like, we gonna skip all the AKA. Word. On his evolved. <laughs> Words. <laughs> talking like Liu Kang. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your boy, I seen Black, AKA Black Dynamite, AKA. <laughs> Fresh Ash Braids, a.k.a. formerly Afro Thunder, a.k.a. formerly known at the yeah. <laughs> a.k.a. Samurai Black, What's up? a.k.a. <laughs> Holy for Carroaches, a.k.a. Shabby Ranks, done clean the fuck up. You see these braids, nigga? I'm really <laughs> feeling them. A.k.a. AKA, 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 you see AKA, these braids? AKA, AKA, cut off my AKA Swiss Army nigga. Swiss AKA, Army nigga. <laughs> Swiss Army nigga. AKA, deflate Swiss this nigga's Army head. <laughs> My hair again. Shout out who came before we slide out. Woo! Yeah. Woo! That foul out. True. Shout out to Cam G. Shout out to who? Shout out to the constituents. Shout out to the home team. See y'all next Word. week. Keep an air out to the streets. Shout, shout out to Deborah for the muffin. Hey, Deborah be having a muffin. The mother you stopped recording, muffin. didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Deborah from accounting on the third floor. We speaking Deborah's way.